Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bless Community Church. My name's Tom. I'm on the leadership team here at Bless, and we are delighted to welcome you. Whether you're here uh, as a regular or whether you're here for the very first time, we are so glad you're with us today, and we hope that you will enjoy our time of worship together, and as we delve into God's Word, that God would speak to you powerfully today. Today we're looking at the last in a series of talks on the hillside, which has been a, a, a series where we've been unpacking the Sermon on the Mount, one of Jesus' most famous passages of teaching. And today we're looking at the subject of, called Built Upon Rock. What are our foundations? What are we building our lives upon? And how can we build our lives upon God? Uh, and, and Jacob and his brother Tom Simpson will be speaking to us in just a little bit. Uh, around that subject. Before we get there, uh, Josh and Alice Cadman are going to lead us in sung worship. So let's just take a moment to be still before God, to invite his Holy Spirit and prepare our hearts to worship him this morning. Good morning. I'm Alice and this is Josh and we're here to lead you in worship this morning. We're going to start in prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you that we're able to worship you this morning, wherever we are, in our homes. We just pray, Lord, that you would be welcomed in every single home this morning. And we pray over those who find it difficult to get into that space to worship you, Lord, especially at this time when we can't be together, Lord. But we're so thankful we can worship you. And we do pray, Lord, that you would help everybody to feel ready to worship. Lord, bring your Holy Spirit this morning. Amen. Amen. Christ is my reward And all of my devotion There's nothing in this world that could ever satisfy. Through every trial, my soul will sing, no turning back. I've been set free. Christ is enough for me. Everything I need, Christ my all in all, the joy of my salvation, and this hope will never fade, heaven is our home, through every storm. My soul will sing, Jesus is here, to God be the glory. Christ is enough for me, Christ is enough for me, everything No 
there is none beside you. Open up my eyes, need wonder and show me who you are and feed me. Leave your heart and lead me in your love to go. Hi. Matthew 7, 24-29 The wise and foolish builders Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. Good morning, Blessed Community Church. It's so good to be with you this Sunday morning. Um, and uh, this Sunday morning, we're doing it slightly different. I won't be shouting at a camera, um, but there'll be two of us shouting at a camera. No, I'm just, just joking. But we actually have an amazing guest with us. Um, and he is my brother, not just a brother in Christ, but also a biological brother, which is just fantastic. Um, this is Tom Simpson. Um, he's training uh, to be a vicar at the moment. Um, and he is just, uh, we're just super excited to have him with us as we delve into the word and uh, discuss um, kind of building our house on the word of God. Um, so I thought I might just kick it off before we start discussing Tom, um, just uh, on the message version of what we just listened to um, of Matthew 7, 24 uh, to 27. So I'm just going to read that out. These words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life, homeowner improvements to your standard of living. They are foundational words, words to build a life on. If you work these words into your life, you are like a smart carpenter who built his house on solid rock. Rain poured down, the river flooded, a tornado hit, but nothing moved that house. It was fixed to the rock. But if you just use my words in Bible studies and don't work them into your life, you are like a stupid carpenter who built his house on a sandy beach. When a storm rolled in, and the waves came up, it collapsed like a house of cards. It'd be really great if I just, uh, just prayed before we um, delve into this discussion, if that's all right. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this conversation. We say, come and have your way. We are desperate for you. We yearn for you. We thank you that through your spirit, it enlightens us of when we read of your word. And we just ask that you just give me and Tom the words to say. Um, and we just also pray for open hearts this Sunday morning. In your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Hello, Tom. It is so Hello. good to have you with us this Sunday morning. And I guess I just wanted to kick it off as we read this really well-known parable, as we kind of look at what Jesus illustrates through sharing this, these two men building a house on rock. Um, it's just really interesting that kind of Jesus doesn't really um, uh, complain about the quality of the house. Actually, to kind of a, a casual observer, he's, he's kind of, uh, you wouldn't really see the difference. Um, but the difference is, is that he's talking about the foundations of the house um, and I, I guess I wanted to just ask the question just to kick us off Tom um, what does it mean to build our life on the word of God 
Yeah, it's such a good question, isn't it? Because it feels like in this passage, Jesus is being, well, especially in the message translation where it changes from fool to stupid, he feels like he's being quite kind of in your face and just mm. telling it how it is. Um, I think in the passage, the context seems to be that Jesus is saying the word of God is literally the words he's saying, the, the things he's saying to put into practice in our lives. You know, it's just come before saying these, this is what a true prophet is and what a true disciple is. And if you don't put into practice these things, then you're a stupid carpenter or a <laughs> foolish man. Um, and so I guess that the first thing is to say that Jesus is saying, do the things I, I tell you to do. Um, and as well as that, not just the things I tell you to do, it's like he knows what life is, right? If he's the one who created and through whom all things were created, he's also just kind of saying, this is how it is. Um, often we think that Jesus is only saying, do this, don't do that, do this, don't do that. But lots of the time he says, Look, this is the reality. If you build your life on sand, it will fall apart. If you build it on rock, it's going to stand the test of all the things of life, the wind, the rain, the tornadoes things like that so I think it's firstly building our lives on the things of Jesus and then the word of God is obviously other connotations as everyone will know it's the the logos the logos whatever way you want to say it and um, it's the thing that is the foundation like you're saying of everything yeah yeah I was I was I was listening to someone speak uh on uh building building your, your life upon a, a like a wise man that, that what we're talking about now and uh they likened it to kind of like the highway code um and I'm sure you are aware of the amount of crashes that I've had in my first <laughs> year of driving um and it it, it, re it kind of really brought me to a, a quick story of when I was on the way to Soul Survivor we had 40 kids in a coach and we were going a little bit earlier with a couple of missionaries and I pulled out when to the end of the road and didn't look and as I pulled out uh, a car just banged smacked right in the it, it, into the front of my car and I, it made me think like actually if we don't follow the highway code there are crashes and our cars break um, yeah. we're actually if we if imagine if everyone followed the highway code there I just can't. wouldn't be energy. <laughs> and they can't and that's why we need Jesus right yeah. um, and so uh, it reminded me of that I thought that was really interesting uh, how um, many kids how many kids were in the car from Bless? Oh, no many, no <laughs> kids, no kids were in Everyone the car. Everyone in this story, they were on the coach. <laughs> no, no, no. So, I, I, I guess I want to move, move on to, uh, to the next question, which is, um, uh, what does it look like when we're, when we're taking the word um, and, and the ways of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus, just as he was teaching it uh, on the hillside and applying it in our lives? How do we do that and what does it look like when we do do that? Yeah, I guess it, it's the first thing to say it's tough, isn't it? It seems quite simple. When I read that passage, I think, OK, Jesus is saying, put me as the foundation, make the things I say and do the foundation of your life. Um, but for some reason, we find that hard, like you're saying with the car, the highway code. For some reason, there's something in us that doesn't find that easy. And so I, I think the way that we do it is we we have to be kind of structural engineers for Jesus <laughs> we have to constantly be digging down because I think we can read it if you've been a Christian longer than kind of a year or or more it's very easy for all the kind of sediment of life to build up on top of your foundation and we very easily lose kind of looking at the thing the thing the, the logos the the rock the foundation on which we're building so the key, I think, is to constantly, as Christians, be pulling away at the things that we might build our lives on, the identities that aren't really Jesus, our money, our jobs, all the different things that we could be building our lives on, um, and, and to constantly try and put Jesus as the thing that we're standing on. And then, and then I think we're found in those foundations. That's where we find our true identities. That's where we find who we really are. And um, that's how he tells us that we're loved and known um, and worth dying for. Mm. 
That's so good. And I, I think it's, it, it's so important to realize that when we do lay our foundations, there is a stability. And it's, it's not to say that the, the things that come in life, the storms, the, the, the troubles and, and the garbage doesn't come. But actually, there's a, there's a stability when those things do come. Um, and, and I guess when we apply that, it's us just not hearing it, but it's us applying it and, 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 and having confidence in Jesus so that we can apply it. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I think what was uh, that it, it makes more sense to me when we read a few chapters later, when Jesus is asking, who do you say I am? And, and Simon Peter um, kind of uh, uh, replies saying, hey, you're the Messiah. You're the you're the son of God. And, and, and Jesus says, hey, this is this is what I'm going to build uh, my life upon you, the rock. Um, and, and I guess when we put our faith in Jesus, it's like to have like a rock like faith when we kind of trust in Jesus and um, put our confidence in the fact that he is who he says he is. Um, and, and he loves to build on our faith. And when we do, it's unstoppable. In chapter 16, it says like the, the gates of hell will, will not be able to overcome the rock, the foundation that you lay your life on. Yeah, and that's so good, isn't it? Because that, in that, Jesus is saying the gates of hell won't be able to prevail because he said that I'm the one who built the church on the rock, which is him. So yeah. it's like this amazing thing where we can feel released as Christians because otherwise we spend our whole, you know, with that whole like get rid of the sediment, we can spend our whole lives being like one of two things, either completely ignoring it and just living like the rest of the world or being so obsessed that we're like just constantly digging to try and find Jesus when the truth is he says I'm here if you build your life on me I'm going to be the one that protects you I'll be the shelter in the storm I'll do all those things for you and it's so releasing then to be like ah oh, good god you're with me yeah yeah and I, I think it is it yeah it's an important thing to remember that it's not our own strength but it's in god's strength like it, it, it wasn't the house that's strong it's, it's the foundation that is strong so the house doesn't fall yeah. um, and the living word of god is the strength that, that that holds us together um so just just to kind of to close before we pray i i, I guess i uh, I wanted to uh, ask that application that we're talking about. Is there a moment in your life, Tom, where the rain came, the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against your house um, uh, that you'd be up for sharing? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Well, I, as you know, probably, I don't know, two years ago now, just over two years ago, um, uh, I was living in Putney with Kaylee, who's my wife, and we were um, living with another couple and my immune system just started to completely fail and it started attacking itself, which basically meant that I had all over the body eczema. Um, it was cracking everywhere and bleeding. I couldn't move without opening up the skin, um, which meant that I was lying on the bed all day, 24-7, um, and every time we went to the doctors, they couldn't diagnose, they couldn't find out what was going wrong with it. Um, and so I gradually just began to spiral, basically. Um, lying in that bed, my mental health started to suffer. Um, and I remember actually coming home from like the third or fourth doctor's appointment with Kaylee and standing at our front door and just looking at each other and thinking, you know, this is where the stuff hits the fan. Do we believe that Jesus? Is with us in this do we believe that he is the, the rock the foundation um, and it was so tough I remember yeah just crying my eyes out as we sat on our bed um, and I was just saying I can't do this anymore um, and I remember through tears crying with Kaylee and singing that song faithful one where it says in the chorus you are the rock and just in those moments of feeling like I had absolutely nothing to give, you know, I wasn't producing any work in, in the eyes of the world. I didn't have anything to give. I was an, an, a kind of someone who couldn't give anything in terms of work. I couldn't even help my wife in terms of marriage. She was training to be a teacher at a very stressful time. And I was just still and couldn't move and starting to get depressed. And it just felt like in those moments, Jesus was there. His presence was there. The rock was there. And I had built my life on him. And so I love that in the passage, it's like Jesus, he knows, doesn't he, that these things will come. 
and there'll be people now who are going through really tough times um, and Jesus knows these things he knows the winds and the rain are coming it's part of our broken world but he says I offer myself as the thing to build your life on as the support when it feels like everything else is falling when it feels like you're just kind of drowning then he's there because he's the one who we find shelter in. he's our rock he's our refuge and more than that he loves us he's not just a hard place to lie on and found a foundation he's a person who's alive and his spirit is working now and in those moments when we sang faithful one i remember just feeling the presence of god so powerfully as we as we just sat there and cried about the situation we were in but knowing that jesus was just so present with us in the midst of all that and if people are going through things like that now i just encourage you jesus promises that he will be with you until the end of the age he promises to be there for you to be a rock and he knows what you're going through and he weeps with you and it's just such a powerful thing to know that in the midst of all that's going on in life and for lots of us this has been a time where there's been those kind of winds and rains coming against us but jesus is the rock he's the word he's the thing that it is worth building your life on mm. thank you so much tom that is powerful um and i was wondering if, if you'd be up for um uh, closing in prayer for us um and particularly praying for um if anyone who's listening here that feels uh they are going through that that period or something similar um to what you just shared um just praying that um the holy spirit just descends and rests and gives that peace uh and that knowledge of knowing that that jesus is there and with them mm. um and just but just before we pray i just feel stirred right now that if there is um any Anyone who's listening to this that that really spoke to them um, we would love to support you as a church um, and uh, just off the bat I just want to say you're more than welcome to email me my email is jacob at blesscc.org um, and if there is uh, just anything that we could do to just help support love practically as well but also just pray for you as well if you didn't want anything else um, we would love to be there for you and support you um, but yeah Tom would you would you be up for closing in prayer yeah definitely let's pray come holy spirit and just speak to each of us now thank you that your word is living it's like a sword and it cuts through the things of our lives that are not meant to be there that are not helpful or healthy and we pray that lord jesus you do surgery on each of us so that we would look more like you, so that we would be building our lives on you. And would you just dig away anything that is not of you, that we are building foundations on. And Lord, for those who are going through times where it feels like the wind and the rain are rising against them, would you be their rock of refuge? Holy Spirit, come now and fill them with a the confidence that whatever they do, wherever they go, you will always love them and you will be with them until the end of the age. And that Jesus has overcome the world. In your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Tom, for sharing all that you have. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your holiday. You um, too. Lots of love. And I'll speak to you soon. Love, love. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much, Jacob, and particular thanks to Tom for speaking to us this morning and for that amazing story there at the end of God's faithfulness through the storms of life. And if you this morning are going through your own storms, your own struggles, as Jacob said, we would love to be there to support you. Please do take the opportunity to drop us an email or join us for Zoom in just a moment where we can pray for you and hear what's going on in your life and bring encouragement and support alongside you. Next week, uh, we have a wonderful special guest, Colin Barnes, who's from River Church in Maidenhead, and he'll be sharing uh, around theology and how we unpack that together 
uh, in an easy and accessible way. And Colin is a brilliant speaker and a wonderful man of God. So can I encourage you, whether you're here or whether you're going off on holidays, uh, please do connect in, catch that teaching and join us next week for that. We'll also be meeting on Zoom next week, just as usual, from 10 until 10.30 before our premiere here on YouTube, and then again from uh, 11 until 11.30. So we look forward to seeing you in just a moment on Zoom, and we pray that you'd have a blessed week. See you soon.